said, well, I'm in the real estate business in New York. And he looked at me and said, oh, that's too bad. That's how bad it was. But it turned out to be a great business, number one, and it turned out to be a great, great success as a hotel. And uh, it was built, and Hyatt was my partner, and we, uh, we did a good job, and uh, it was uh, from, from the time it opened, it was amazing, because from the day it opened, the market changed. And that's happened with a number of jobs. That happened with me with 40 Wall Street. I bought a building, the tallest building in downtown Manhattan, bought it during the Depression, literally the Depression of the early 90s, and paid very little for it. Again, nobody wanted it. And then when I opened, it was like the world had changed, and it became a tremendously successful building, which I still have. So a lot of things happened, but with this one in particular, because when I did it, it was people just didn't want it, especially my father. My father was the man that taught me the most, and he loaned me a small amount of money, and I built it into a, a great, great company, and it was, you know, just something I loved, but he was so against me coming into Manhattan. And then uh, this became so successful, and he said, wow, uh, paid him back the money, did other things. We did the convention center, the Jacob Javits Convention Center. I got the, the state and the city to build, and we did it. They were going to build that one in the water, and they had all sorts of environmental approvals. See, even then, they had environmental approvals. And they had the pierhead bulkhead problems, they had tremendous problems, and they were in the wrong location. I went to Governor Kerry, who was a Democrat, but I want to tell you, he was a great, great problem solver. And they were spending so much money on and wasting it. They couldn't get any approval. And I went to the governor. We had a man, I won't mention his name, but he's very well known. And he was totally against what I was doing. And he just wanted to build it in this one location, which was a bad, you had to go through a Hell's Kitchen, and you had to go under the West Side Highway, you had to build ramps over the highway, you had no access, and on top of that, it was being built in the Hudson River, and you couldn't get any approvals. So other than that, it was a wonderful site. <laughs> and this guy, I won't mention his name, his name was Richard Ravitch, was told <laughs> New Yorkers know that name. He was so intent on building it. And I was arguing with him and fighting, and I said, look, I have the, an option to the West Side Railroad Yards, and I had it for this purpose. I did it with the Penn Central Company, which was in bankruptcy. And I said, look, this, you don't have to go it's on the proper side of the West Side Highway. The site is big, the site is big. We went up to Governor Carey, and Governor Carey appointed Ravage to head up this commission to build the convention center. And they were just about starting. And I sat down, and I'll never forget it. I sat down with Governor Hugh Carey and his staff, and he said, Ravage, you make the case for your site. And he made a case for 20 minutes. And every time he talked, it was just wrong, wrong, wrong. He said, Donald, would you make the case? I made the case, it took me five minutes. At the end of five minutes, he says, not even close. Totally changed gears, built it, got the approvals quickly, got it built. It was called the Jacob Javits Convention Center. And to this day, it was so happy. other buildings all over the city. I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, listing some of them, right? because this one really was where I started. This was my first. This was my first, the Grand Hyatt Hotel. And then uh, little things like the Walman Rink. Seven years, the city couldn't fix an ice skating rink. Probably, I think I became more famous than the Walman They had, for seven years, they couldn't build an ice skating rink. For seven years. And I had my daughter, Ivanka. She was very, did anybody have Ivanka? But she was a very young girl. She kept saying, Daddy, Daddy, can we go ice skating? And year after year, I'd say, you can't. They're building the rink. And finally, I went down and I looked. And I saw 400 men. In those cases, it was all men, I have to say. Today, you have men and women as your construction people, which is great. But it was all men. And 400 men sitting in the rink, not working. And I came back a half hour later, they still weren't working. They were taking lunch breaks many, many times a day. And nobody was working. And they went out and they got from Miami Beach a expert on ice. But they meant refrigerators, not to make ice. And I'll never forget, sort of an interesting story. I hope it's interesting, but we got to tell it anyway, because who the hell wants to talk about politics? All the time? <laughs> politics gets a little boring. But what happened is I went to the mayor and said, listen, Mr. Mayor, Ed Gotcha. I said, it's seven years now, it's going to be eight, nine, ten, they have no idea. They use the thing called Freon, and that's a gas that goes through copper piping, copper tubing. 
They had six miles of copper. It had four inches apart. And it was laid this massive rink. It's almost 90,000 square feet. That's like big, big office floors times three. Big spot. Still there. You see it. I run it. I've run it for many, many years. It's been such a cement, tremendous place. But they had the freedom. And it was laid four inches, miles of it. And every time they put this beautiful copper down, every single time, the next night, people would steal it. <laughs> so they kept putting it down, kept getting stuck. Putting it down, kept getting stuck. Then they put the police force around, and it was fine. Until the police force decided to go to lunch, it was all stopped. So they were losing millions of dollars. They were actually in for $22 million, and they had nothing. And I went to see Ed Koch, and he said, I'm not going to let you do it. And then I went to see some of the newspapers. I went to the editorial boards. I said, the mayor won't let us do it. I can fix this thing. I'll do it in six months to a year. And you're going to be years and years. And they don't know what they're doing and they're spending a fortune. And I'll never forget, I went to two editorial boards, New York Times and the other one I won't say. Because I don't like it. But I do like the New York Post. I do like it. Anyway, they let me do it. I took over the project, and a lot of people said, well, it was built. It wasn't built. It was, the, the concrete was poured. It was nine inches higher on one side than the other side. So when you poured the water, you had a big swimming pool here, and this one had done none. It was just a mess. And the water was so deep, you couldn't freeze it because it was too much. So I had to rip out the entire slab, and the slab was a foot and a half thick. It only had to be four inches. So we ripped it, and we did. And I finished it in four months. And I said, if it cost any more than two months, yeah! it's true. Because it's a great government. They study this at the Wharton School. They study it at Harvard because it's the difference maybe between the public sector and the private sector. I went in. Been, to this day, it's a great case study. I went in and we did a job like you wouldn't believe. We took out that horrible, big, massive slab of concrete. We leveled it out. But most importantly, I said to the people, what's with this freon? I hear they're losing millions of dollars of copper duping all the time. What is it? And I said, who are the people? And they said, well, it's an air conditioning firm from Miami. I said, for Miami? What do we, I don't want ice from Miami. So I called up a friend of mine who was a part owner of the Montreal Canadiens. Now we're talking, right? Ice. I said, would you do me a favor? Do you have anybody that knows how to make ice for an ice skating rink? He said, I have the greatest guy in the world. I said, could I talk to him, please? And he came to New York, and he saw me. He said, this is crazy. He said, Mr. Trump, they're going to have five miles of this piping. If there's a little pinhole, because it's gas, free on gas. If there's a little pinhole, then five miles, it's, it's dead. He said, you don't want that. You want rubber hose, and you want water. And in the water, you put salt so it doesn't freeze. I said, boy, that sounds good. <laughs> and I went out and we bought it for just a tiny amount of money. And it was rubber hose every four inches, but it's rubber hose. We got the equipment. It's called brine. They call it brine. And we did the rubber hose. Nobody stole the rubber hose. Nobody did. We didn't need, we didn't need security. Nobody stole the rubber hose. And we opened it up. And it was the most amazing thing. We put the rubber hose down, we tested it, there wasn't a leak in the whole thing. 6.2 miles of rubber hose. Can you believe it? That's a lot. This one. Wasn't a leak. Now what happened is we put the concrete on. We had concrete what trucks happened? lined up to Harlem. Now, my, all of my construction friends in that corner, in fact, they all have the worst seats, I don't know why. <laughs> construction guys usually have the best seats. But they understand what I'm talking about. Because we wanted a contiguous pour. Because the city used to pour 10 feet, come back a week later, pour another 10 feet, and yet all these blocks go, you want a contiguous pour. We had, all the way back to Harlem, we had trucks. And the most amazing thing, and they poured. It took two days to pour the slab. We actually made it six inches, because that's better. And we turned on, and we put two inches of water on top of the slab, and they made lasers. It was such a perfect slab. To this day, it's perfect. They then put the water on top. I said, try it. Because this thing hadn't had ice in nine years. I said, try it. And in two hours, we had the most beautiful ice, just like the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I had a lot of fun with New York. And we did another job recently in the Bronx, where it's the same thing, where they had For 26 years, I mean, people say, give me a break. 26. The only reason I don't say 32 is because that can't be proven. 26 years. It ended up costing hundreds of millions.
millions of dollars. Nobody knows what the price is. And Michael Bloomberg said, could you do me a favor? Could you look at this? It's a disaster. It's been under construction for so many, and he was embarrassed. And it's a very big golf project designed by Jack Nicklaus and, you know, many, many iterations. But I got it built in one year, and it's open today and greatly successful. So, especially I think my job on the west side of 